Hello everyone, we're here at the Chicano Resource Center at the East Los Angeles Library. My name is Jake Montoya and I am a MBK My Brother's Keeper peer advocate for the Los Angeles County. And I'm introducing Daniel Hernandez who is the librarian here at the Chicano Resource Center at East Los Angeles Library. And we're going to be talking about the Chicano Moratorium, its 50th anniversary coming up in August, and just its role and its importance, its significance in the, Ch in the Chicano rights movement. So just jumping into it, for someone who doesn't really have any background information on the Chicano Moratorium, what would you say to them that it was? Well, see, at the time the Vietnam War was going on, mm -hmm. and Latinos, it was felt, were being sent to the front in greater numbers mm -hmm. than other groups. So the community of East LA decided to hold a peaceful rally to protest mm -hmm. this and bring this idea to the attention of the public. Mm -hmm. So they, they had a rally where it started here in Belvedere Park, which is where East LA Library mm -hmm. is at, and they walked down to Whittier Boulevard and they made a right and then they walked over to what was then called Laguna Park. Mm -hmm. And at Laguna Park, there were families and people just, uh, you know, watching mm -hmm. the rally it was a on the protest, stage. Right? It was a, a peaceful protest. Yeah, uh, a convening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had a stage. They were doing traditional dances, singing, mm -hmm. some, you know, speakers. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was reported that there was some kind of disturbance. Mm -hmm. And so the police came and broke up the crowd mm -hmm. by using tear gas and batons and getting them to disperse. Mm -hmm. And they were hitting, you know, women mm -hmm. and people were scared and hiding in the restrooms mm -hmm. and actually two people were killed. Mm -hmm. um, it became a, a, a point of contention. A right? point of contention, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so of course there was some bottle throwing and mm -hmm. things like this. But there was a writer for the L.A. Times by the name of Ruben Salazar, mm -hmm. who was also um, the head news editor at the. Spanish station at the time, KMEX, and he was known for being the go-between between the Chicano community and the more dominant mm -hmm. culture. He was the audible bridge, right? Yes, um. and he was getting people to understand the feelings of, of, mm -hmm. of the group. Well, he went to a bar to write up his notes mm -hmm. And then somebody called a disturbance at the bar, and the police came to the bar and they shot a tear gas canister into the bar, which hit him mm -hmm. and killed him, mm -hmm. thereby silencing mm -hmm. the the voice of the, the one the one voice between the mm -hmm. two groups. And I think that that is why this event in particular is very important because it wasn't necessarily the biggest demonstration it wasn't necessarily the longest planned out demonstration or the loudest it just ended up in the silencing the voice of the community which was a little more the effects of it were heavier felt even though it wasn't maybe necessarily one of the bigger happenings right right uh -huh. and then from there the whole attitude changed. Mm -hmm. um, now there were lots of people who were fighting against police brutality, mm -hmm. who were looking for political, more political power, mm -hmm. a bigger say in, in what goes on in, a, mm -hmm. in, a, in the community. Um, it spurred great artists, mm -hmm. It spurred literature. Um, it changed 
the way Latinos felt, mm -hmm. and, and, and they were no longer just taking it, they were now going to fight for it. Definitely. And that <coughs> has had its effect. Mm -hmm. Things have changed in East Los Angeles for sure and in a lot of places. There are a lot of Latinos in political power. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of Latinos that are loved for their art mm -hmm. and that gave strength to the community. Mm -hmm. But it was also a scar to the community because they never really forgot. Definitely. So that's kind of where we're at now. Mm -hmm. um, not everything is better, mm -hmm. or, um, but um, people feel stronger. Mm -hmm. It happened, you know, August 29th, 1970, right? This is August 29th, 2020 is the 50th anniversary. So it happened really, it happened, like you said, after the, the blowouts, the East LA blowouts of the walk, the school walkouts, right? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't maybe necessarily as big as those, um, but it was kind of, like you said, right on the tail end of when Chicanos, Mexican Americans were starting to identify that they had numbers, they had maybe mm -hmm. some political power, if if they got into the offices, yeah. right? That they, they wanted that pull, they wanted that power, mm -hmm. that representation, rather. Mm -hmm. um, so this was kind of like, and like you said, that this was the turning point that it helped kind of define the attitude of the community, Yeah. right? Like kind of almost like um, it, it defined a lot of the art that came out of it. Um, you know, it, hap it happened in 1970, and then a lot of the murals that popped up in East Los Angeles were in the early 70s exactly. that kind of responded to that, right? Yes, and, and, and it's, it, that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, the presence of Latinos, mostly in those days it was Mexican Americans because mm -hmm. that's who was here at the time, mm -hmm. but it spurred on the presence of them, whereas before people were just sort of relegated to the bar barrio, you know, mm -hmm. and now people became a little bit more mm -hmm. out you know, in the public and making a difference. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the, the best outcome of, of the moratorium. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That and the fact that uh, we got this beautiful Chicano Resource Center yeah, where absolutely. everyone can get their uh, information since we've been collecting all the way through the whole event mm -hmm. from, from, from a couple of years after the event mm -hmm. until now. Yeah, so. just the fact that we now have this resource center in the community, right? Yeah. It's in the community that it's, that it's referencing and that it's serving. Yeah, that's the, the archive of that event. Exactly. You know? mm -hmm. it, but it, if it was going to happen anywhere in the urban world, it was going to happen in East Los Angeles because East Los Angeles is an old and strong community. Mm -hmm. It was a tragic event, but mm -hmm. it, it was also a, a, an event that really brought everyone together. That's a great point that, it, you know, through the tragedy, it ended up strengthening the resilience of the community. Mm -hmm. And it, it felt, although it made, a, it made an us versus them mentality, it brought the community together mm -hmm. and that it solidified them all that, you mm -hmm. know, there was an understanding that we had to take care of each other. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. All right. Well, thank you so much, Daniel, for hosting us in the Chicano Resource Center. Thank you for hosting this conversation. Um, but I know we really just scratched the surface on Chicano history and the the history of the movimiento and the history of the Chicano moratorium itself. So, if you would like to learn more on the Chicano moratorium or any of the topics we talked about, go ahead and check out lacountylibrary.org for more information. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>